Welcome back, everybody, to game number two of Maneski versus Pacific Emacs. This is your grand finals for the GEST IDC November, and I was actually just reading the chat. It sounds like we may have a remake to SG, but let's talk about this series. Let's break down this matchup. Maneski, in Maneski, we have Bimbo. We have the old school champs of Pinoy Dota 1. They have had quite a slump over the past six months or so. Uh, <laughs> they really don't want to play in Singapore. Um... But they have had quite a slump. I mean, let's be honest about it. They've had roster changes. There's no more jewels on the team, which about 5,000 of you always mention in the chat every single game. Oh, well, you, you always mention jewels, really, no matter what is happening. I bet you say jewels in your sleep to yourselves over and over while you're eating your cereal, while you're changing your socks. It's all about jewels all the time. It's a very funny thing to see. But uh, as far as <laughs> Mineski, they've struggled. That's pretty much the storyline coming to this one. They've struggled. They have the old, they have the skill, they've had some roster changes, but they are back, baby, and they are looking solid. They really stormed their way through the brackets, took down iZone, took down MSI Evo GT, then played First Esports, who's sort of this unknown up-and-coming team from Thailand. This was actually First Esports, uh, very first GST. They did great coming into that match, but Maneski overwhelmed them. Bimbo, it was really the Bimbo show. Uh, he's he's the one who got all the hype. He's the one who made all the big flashy plays. But it was Woots and RR, those two solid supports who delivered time and again. As far as this draft goes, they do get a signature hero for Woots. They get the Chen. But before we dive into the draft too much, I do want to talk real quickly about Emacs. Pacific Emacs, they have won this tournament three times. They are the winningest team when it comes to your GEST. Uh, they won it in June. They won it again in July. And... I was actually just informed. I was wrong previously, but they crashed out in August. They went 0-4 in their group stage record. Uh, they Then they bounced back, though. Then the next month, September, that was our last of main major GEST. We had the All-Stars in October, but I don't really count that. And, well, coming into that, that was their third win. They won in September, and they looked pretty convincing there, too. And remember, GEST is a grueling format. It is single elimination all the way through the group stages only half of the teams make it out of the groups uh, and until you get to the grand finals you, it's all best out of one so there's just no room for error no margin for making mistakes and it's just a testament to how well emex has played they're sort of your new kings or your new top dogs when it comes to dota one when it comes to philippines at dota action basically because gst sure it's an sea event but let's be honest it's been philippine teams filipino teams pinoy teams just winning time and again if not winning, dominating. I mean, in this event, we had seven. We had seven Filipino teams, three in one group, four in another. And all seven of them either made it out of their groups. Uh, or in one case, there were two teams that were tied. And only you can only have three teams making it out of each group. So uh, there was a tie break between one of them. But that's, that's just an insane level of accomplishment. So obviously, the Filipinos have a lot to be proud of this month. Still, there are those rising hopes. SVRES from Cambodia. Uh, as well as first first esports from Thailand, who both looked very strong, finished third and fourth. So it's not that the other nations can't compete, it's just that overall the Filipinos are dominating. Okay, that's our background for this match. Let's talk about the draft. Maneski, they ban out, well, pretty much all solos. TA, uh, you can run the Weaver as, as more of a tri-lane with the Earthshaker combo, uh, but actually second banning the Weaver, that's all, that looks like a throwaway ban to me. That's uh, it's not something we really see too much of from Pacific Emacs. It's certainly not here that I would, on the list of heroes that concern me as far as giving the way to Pacific Emacs, I would put Drow Ranger and Dragonite both above that, but they choose to ban the TA, they choose to ban out the, the Weaver, and then they go ahead and they pick up some very sort of defensive heroes. They get the Puck, they get the Chen, and the Rubik. Lots of lockdown, not much damage though. They really lack for damage. They need some very hard-hitting carries, some very strong solo type players. It looks to be most likely a Bimbo Puck, I believe he's the one who's been playing it for them in this event. And, well, if it's a Bimbo Puck, it'll be in that off lane. He'll probably use his annoying little jungling spots, trying to get some farm wherever he can. Uh, and by annoying little jungling spots, I mean this place. Super, super annoying to deal with. <laughs> uh, as far as the Chen, they do get the Woods Chen. So that's something good for them. But I still feel like his Earthshaker and his Sand Cane are scarier. Uh, it's not that his Chen isn't good. It's just it doesn't scare me the way that the Woods the Woods, Sand King, and Earthshaker do. And if you missed the games earlier, the, the games against iZone and MSI EVO GT, uh, and in fact, even the game against First Esports, MSI or, or Mineski just had so... Woods played so exceptionally well on the Earthshaker, but he'll be on Chen this time. As far as the draft on the other side, well, this is what they used in game one. If it ain't broke, 
why why try to fix it? Pacific Emacs, they've got the Dragon Knight, the Earthshaker. Now they go back for the Twin Headed Dragon and the Drow Ranger. Now this is this is all about the Drow Ranger. Once she hits level six, it, the team gets really scary. But even before that, the new True Shot R gives all your heroes extra damage, so it helps every single ranged hero in the laning phase. Once she hits six, it helps even more. Dragon Knight, although he's technically a melee hero. Uh, before he hits level 6, once he gets to level 6, he's in range form. So he benefits from two-shot R2. R as long as Drow Ranger isn't dying, she doesn't even have to fight. She just stands in one lane and farms. She goes into the jungle and farms. She stacks Ancients with an early helm of the Dominator. It will be Biobus, of course, reprising his role on that Drow Ranger. And we know, as far as the Pinoy carries go, he's almost second to none. I mean, I I'm sure there's some names that you guys will throw out in the chat, but I don't know if anyone's been more consistent than Biobus. And that's, he's a big part of why Emax is here. Again, looking for their fourth championship, leading this series one to nothing right now. And I, I just, I'm a little surprised that Mineski would give away the full compo. The, the two big heroes, the Dragonite and... Oh, no. Oh, no. They do know about the Magnetar and they're going to snap it up. And I... Oh, Mineski, this is... <laughs> this is so painful. Oh, it's not that they can't win, but... <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm going to need a moment to digest this pick. Yeah. Uh, well, let's introduce the players, then I'm going to talk about that pick, because I'm feeling a little flame coming on. Biobus going to be playing that Drow Ranger. He's got the Wraith Band. He's got the Ancient Tangos. NMA going to be on the Earthshaker, denying that one, of course, to Wootz on Mineski's side. This is Pacific Emacs. This is your up-and-coming or new uh, top dogs when it comes to Pinoy Dota 1. We have Don on his Jakiro again. Played a very solid one last game. It is going to be Chin. Uh, it is Chin, not CHN. It's Chin on the Magnus. He's got six tangos already. And last but not least, we've got Hug on, once again, the solo mid Dragonite. We'll see him trying to rush that Lothar's Edge. We'll see if this works, but... Maneski on the other side. We have RR once again. Uh, this is still not a Shadow Demon. I feel like the Shadow Demon is by far his best support, but he gets Vengeful Spirit. Still pretty much the same kind of hero. They're running Oa. Oa's going to be playing that safe lane farming alchemist. We have Solo mid J, so not going to the off lane. It'll be a J Rubik this time around. Woots on his Chen. No surprise there. And then last but not least, it's Y. As the puck, Y got absolutely destroyed last game as a solo mid Queen of Pain. Made a couple of key mistakes. I wouldn't say he cost them the game because I feel that game really came down to picks more than anything else. But he certainly didn't help matters. So I wonder if Bimbo said, okay, let me handle solo mid. I'm the more experienced player. Uh, you're sort of this guy who's just trying to get used to playing at these top level matches. Let me take the heat. Let me deal with the pressure. I'm going to throw you into that off lane. Uh, or at least give you a 1v1 matchup, hopefully in the safe lane. Looks like it might be a 1v1 matchup. Pacific East, Emax. Well, they scout off the lanes, they get the wards down, and it looks like they... Nope, not a 1v1. You couldn't see the Jakira is blending into the map too much. Uh, but it will be Jakira as well as Drow Ranger here. So they're going to rotate back towards the dual lane. I thought they might just try and 1v1 the Drow versus the Puck, which works. That's actually fine. That is a matchup that Drow can win. Uh, but obviously you have to be worried about Chen coming out of the jungle. You don't know where he's going to be. This is exactly what Mineski have to do. They have to be aggressive throughout the game. They can't even... They honestly can't even let Drow Ranger get six without having a big advantage. If they do, the game's pretty much over. This is really the only thing to do. Unfortunately, they have a Tornado Creep, a Wildkin. Not really the ideal creep to try and kill off this Dragonite. They're going to charge in. The problem is, if you don't get the right creep... It's a lot of waste of time. They have to be aggressive, but it's risky. It's not reliable. And once... Uh, the, I love this rotation. Emacs, they see the Drow Ranger 1v1 matchup, a dream matchup. And it's Biobus versus Y, who has done well in this tournament. But obviously, you're going to be confident Biobus can take that lane. Especially when he's got the better 1v1 hero. Now they rotate the two supports mid, and this is a devastating Yankee combo. Look at Jay's positioning. It's good, but is it good enough? In comes Shakiro. He's going to try to start this off with the Ice Path. They're going to try and force him back into a Fissure Block. And actually not going just yet. The Ice Path cutting off his retreat, but Jay is just playing like a boss. He is that mole of sorts. You know, just popping at, popping down into one hole, and then he'll pop up again in another. Already Jay 7-2, and two, having a nice time in this lane. Up towards the top lane, we have a 5 and 2 Chin. He's playing that Magnetar. He already has a point into Skira. We saw him run away earlier. Mineski just desperately trying to avoid putting that Drow, uh, getting that Drow in the same lane as the 
as the Alchemist, because they know that's the match, but they just can't win. Magic Missile and the long range stun. Unfortunately, they were stacked. In comes the backstab. They want a first blood, but Magnus is not an easy kill. It's actually going to be the Vengeful Spirit who dies first. Now the Centaur stop. I think he's still... Oh, he's going to die. There's your test of fate. Need to remove that tower aggro. One more auto attack for the tower. Two heroes die just to claim a first blood. Definitely not worth it. Although, the good news is Magnus doesn't get the experience for that second one. But now Puck. Puck going to struggle in this lane. They weren't able to find the kill the first time that they went towards mid. But I don't really think they need to be here. I'm honestly surprised they're even staying here at all. I'd much rather see them pressure J or even just rotate, you know, maybe leave one here and then rotate one towards top. Because if you send either Earthshaker or Jakiro up towards that top lane, they are great against these Tower Dice. They can completely shut down. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, Alchemist might die to this. He's only got two base armor. He's going to drop really low. One more Shockwave will bring him down. This is Magnetar. This is a hero that's just been terrorizing the Dota 2 seed. And he is showing that he is the same broken beast in this game. This hero was something like 10 and 1 at DreamHack. I think he might have been played once more in the grand final. Supposedly he lost that game, but I know he was 10 and 1 or 11 and 1. Something along those lines going into those grand finals. Something absolutely insane. This is this is Magnus, you know, you try and you try and bite that hand and well, it's it's spiky. It's filled with unpleasant things. You don't really want to get aggressive against Magnus. He is almost impossible to gank in the lane. But you also can't ignore him. That's the problem with the hero. If you ignore him, then he hits level 6. Suddenly, you have reverse polarity. And then you're setting that up with the, the Echo Slam to follow. The Fissure on top of it. The Ice Path. The Macro Pyre. All the damage in the world. The Silence, if it's here, will ruin this. Is there a Silence? No Biobus. Has not leveled it up yet. Perfectly normal build. Jay is 18 at 4. But at the same time, Hug, well, he's had a double damage rune. That's going to help. But even without it, I just, Rubik is not going to be able to shut down a hero like Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight doesn't rely on his auto attack to farm, especially in the hands of a Pinoy player. He's just going to be bottle crowing. So this matchup, sure, Jay's going to get big, but he's not shutting down Hug. And this is the beauty of Pacific Strat. In fact, I would say it's even stronger than what we saw last game because they have, not only do they have the two carries and the Dragon Knight and the, the Drow Ranger, who obviously synergize well together. True Shot Art is going to make Dragon Knight stronger whenever he's in ult form in the, main, in the mid game. Not only is that the case. Whoa, 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 Naname. Oh, nice chain stun there. They really need this kill. They should be able to find it, and they will. Perfect chain stun. Very impressive. That's your Wooch Chen for you. Obviously set up by that magic missile. E anyway, back to my point. Even though they have two carries, the Drought Ranger, uh, the Dragon Knight, they're actually stronger than they were last game because they have Empower. They have Magnetar who can set everything up for them. And in fact, he's just solo killing this offlane Alchemist. This is not working. Oh, Oa oh, oh, is just getting completely destroyed. Maneski, this is Alchemist. This was, anyway, the reason I was going to sort of question this pick. Alchemist is horrible in the laning stage. He's one of the worst leaders in the game. Acid Spray is a little bit annoying to fight into. But you're picking that against a carry that, if she wins the lading stage, pretty much wins the game. That's your Drow Ranger. So I really question that pick. Ice Path on two. Is she really going to live? No, the long range test of fate. Woots is there whenever you need them. Now look at Dragonite. Well, we'll see the plus damage in a second. But that that's really going to... Once he once Drow Ranger's back alive, he'll have all that plus damage from True Shot R. It's such a, it's such a cool combo and such a smart strategy. Look at that. Already plus 10 as the Fade Bolt wears off. Even when the Fade Bolt's applied to him. And this is only the level 6 Drow Ranger. This is the Drow Ranger in the offlane. Um, not really getting that much farm. At least not as much as you would like. 22 and 7, not bad, but you're not level 6 yet. I say not that much farm. Actually, seems to be getting more than I thought. Uh, Might have gotten that kill on the Puck earlier, I want to say. No. No. What am I talking about? I don't know. But somehow she's got shreds and she's got a Wraith Ban. Once she hits level 6, she's going to be very scary. Again, she doesn't have to be the hard carry. She just has to be alive in her jungle in the mid game. And that's going to make Dragonite a fearsome beast. And hey, if she does damage, that's bonus. That's icing on the cake. But this is really bad. Shin is so having such a powerful start. Art of the Arcane Boots. And Alchemist isn't really farming well. He has gone for level 3 Goblin's Greed. 25 and 6. But with those deaths, that's really going to set him back. I think he's even trying to rush a Relic. I want to say he's trying to rush Relic. Because he's at 1800 gold. Maybe a Hand of Midas. Uh, this looks to be a very greedy build from Oa. Which makes sense. They need something greedy to carry this late. At the same time, how are you realistically going to get there? They're not going to leave you alone forever. You're dying to the Magnetar right now. Soon they're going to rotate in the supports. At some point in this game, they are going to come for you, especially if they say you still don't have it purchased any items at seven minutes into the game. 
Already hitting level 7. That will be probably a max goblin screen. It is. Now he's going to walk back to base. Maybe it will be a hand of Midas. We're about to find out how greedy he wants to be. The good, I guess a piece of good news. Woots is farming reasonably well. He's up to level 5. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Dragonite. <laughs> uh, thinking about it. Uh, got distracted there. But yeah, Woots is level 5. He's getting close to that hand of God. That will help them a little bit. They really, they really just need to keep the pressure up. That's the problem. They need Woots to be high level so they have the heal. So they don't just die instantly to a Magnetar. You know, to the chain stun, to the reverse polarity, the fissure, the ice path. At the, they need that Chen to be high level, but they also need him to be doing things like this. Setting up kills middle lane, it's a charge in. He does have the reverse polarity, but he doesn't get it off until it's too late. And now Chin might actually die. Shockwave was stolen. It's turned around. Huge play set up by Maneski. And a big mistake there. Magnetar skewers in, gets stunned right as he arrives. You can do a drive-by reverse polarity. You can cast while you're moving. He tried to cast after he got there, but even so, even if he had gotten it off, I don't know. They were fighting under the enemy tower. That's going to give your Chen level 6. That's going to give Woods the hand of God. He's getting close to level 7. I think you need to rush something like a mechanism. Normally, you'd see the arcane boots, but this is a game where you need that burst heal. You need that extra armor. Every little bit helps when you're dealing with Empower soon to come out. You're dealing with Drow Rangers, not hit level 6. Bimbo's having a really big impact. If anyone can keep his team in this game, it will be Captain J. Can he do it, though? Yes, he can. He kills off Don. Don tries to run the other way. Bimbo is making some surprisingly big plays. And also, I'm, I'm surprised to see Emacs devoting so much to trying to shut him down. I really don't think they need to. Let Bimbo get farm. What's the big deal? You have a Drow Ranger, a Magnetar, and tons of other chain stun. You're going to win this late game. All you need to do is farm and live so it's very surprising for me to see the way that they're played at the same time though well this is also an overextension this one going the way of Maneski the old sunk cooldown he has gone for a completed vanguard shockwave coming in now the flame breath the two forms of damage and now the skewer on top of it they get a double kill well that was a bit of a bailout for Maneski just when they start to get some momentum they throw most of it away now the Drow Ranger hits level 6. Meanwhile, the backstab comes in. Y is level 6 as well. He's got the ult. Will he use it? Not going to just yet. Drow Ranger trying to make it out of there. But here comes the net. Here comes, once again, Woots in position. Setting up so many kills. Boy, oh boy. This is this is the difference between having Woots on the Crystal Maiden last game and having him on a Chen this game. Or what we saw earlier, the Earthshaker, the Sand King. This is a hero that can make some plays. This is a hero that can have a big impact, especially in this kind of a game where Pacific are being greedy, where they're, they're either farming too much, where they shouldn't be farming too far away from the lanes. Uh, it's still kind of a concern, but the nice thing is when you kill the, dr the Drow and she actually dies, that Dragonite also loses his plus damage, so he's a much easier kill. Oh, they wanted the body block there with the Fissure. Now Dragon Tail stolen, used again. So Bimbo is just out of his mind right now. Oh, they gave him a couple kills, and now he is really starting to snowball. He's on a killing spree. It feels like more, though. It feels like a lot more. He's getting close to what I assume will be a four staff. Unbelievable. It looked so bad for Maneski. It looked like they were actually losing every single lane, and now they have clawed their way back into this game. In fact, they're leading when it comes to kills. They do have Alchemist, who farms really fast. But he needs to farm a lot of items. Uh, he's sure, he's got a Vengeful Spirit. He's going to have the Command R. It'll help a little bit. He can have maybe some Chen R's. He'll have some support backing him up. But he's up against the Dragon Knight. Uh, speaking of Dragon Knight, I haven't seen that guy in forever. Is under <laughs> there we go. He's up against the Dragonite, Drow Ranger, Magnus. It's just so much innate carry potential. You have to be like twice as big as them, at least, to be able to deal with them. They've always got the stun that goes through BKB. Unfortunately, Y is going to get picked off in the top lane. Meanwhile, the mid-tier one goes down. Woots doing a great job of pushing these lanes. What is he going for? He's up to 3k gold. I, I, I think it's the completed mech. I assume that's what he'll buy. I saw something get purchased, but... Well, we'll figure out what it is later. So, presumably, it's the completed mechanism coming out to him uh, in a few moments. Either way, they are making an aggressive foray into the enemy jungle. They're going to find a Magnetar with a Blink Dagger, but he can't Blink out of this one. He does have the ult. Will he use it? There's the Fissure. No, actually, maybe he doesn't have the ult. I thought he did. 
Uh, maybe I'm forgetting when he used it, but in fact, there's the silence, and now Empower on the Drow Ranger, up to plus 93 damage, and she's only level 8, just insane damage, now focusing on Jay, Jay's done so much this game, and he gets caught out, Jay will fall, it's looking like a disaster, that was, I think that was her, oh, that was the Fissure coming in, look how quickly Drow Ranger is bringing down Woots, Woots, all the micro in the world is needed to save him here, there's your net, it's the stomp off cooldown, there's the stop, it looks like Woots might be able to escape, but I, even when he plays amazingly, all he can do is get to safety. They don't have the damage to... They have to have a perfectly constructed team fight. If anything gets sloppy, they just lose. They don't have a shot. An Alchemist, although he farms fast, he doesn't do much now. He's not a hero like Drow Ranger. He doesn't have 600 range. He doesn't have plus 71 damage. He's not a Dragonite who has a reliable ranged attack and that range stun. Yes, yeah, sure, he can charge up his unstable concoction, but during that time, he's running around with three armor... He's running around relatively squishy, relatively easy to kill. And that's just a concern. Picking an Alchemist, I feel he does much better against nuke heavy lineups. Uh, because he has high HP, but he also has low armor. And that's something to be concerned about when you're up against all the physical damage of this Pacific squad. Uh, Woods has done a lot. Will it be enough? That's the question for me right now. Here comes the courier. Also, crucially, they... Oh, it's not a... It's a Necronomicon. That's got to be what he spent all his gold on. They just want to push early. Oh, this is interesting. We all know what the counter to mass Necronomicon is. This is quiz time, folks. How do you counter those Necronomicons when they start to stack up? That's right. You may have guessed it. It's the mass hand of Midas. We'll see if Pacific actually care enough to go for it. Uh, of course, BKBs are pretty nice against those two, but uh, hand of Midas is an option. I say mass, they only have one now, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if Maneski tried to build a few more. That does strike me as something they would look to do. Well, I saw the recipes. Did he not buy any of the components? What the hell happened? I'm still very baffled. I'm still trying to figure out where these items are. He had 3.8k. I guess he just bought a double recipe. Oh boy, that is not what they need right now. They need an item. They need something that will help them. Tower will be last hit by the pup. He's getting close to the blink dagger. On the bottom lane, the tower denied by Jay, so they simultaneously deny a tower and pick one up themselves. That is something bright. That is a, a moment that will make Mineski a little bit happy. Will it be enough, though? The Shadow Blade's coming soon. The Lothar's Edge, rather. The Lothar's Edge is coming soon for this Dragon Knight. Uh, as for the Drow Ranger, not really farming that great. Only 14 minutes in. It's, it's, not, it's not enough by herself. If she was a normal carry... They'd be in a lot of trouble, but she's not. She's Drow Ranger, so if, if as long as she's alive and Dragon Knight's big, she's offering a lot to this team. I'm still baffled. Oh, there you go. Okay, <laughs> something must have been hidden on the ground somewhere. But finally, he's got the Necronomicon, too. This is going to be just a very aggressive early push. They want to start knocking these towers down. Oh, it's getting close to Relic, getting close to that Radiance, but he needs a lot more than a Radiance. He's going to need probably an Assault Caress. at least a plate mailed even to be able to survive shadow blade oh nice job there lothar's edge and meanwhile they do kick off bimbo on the back lines obviously that lothar's edge it will prevent the net from hitting you if you go invis if you fade before the net connects and the enemy doesn't have vision but more importantly they pick off bimbo they force out a buyback and that is something bimbo loves to do is buyback <laughs> he does not like spending time dead he finds it boring There you go, there's the map color. <laughs> Sorry guys, this game has been a little action-packed. Not that much time to read chat, but... Uh, hopefully, hopefully you haven't been too upset. And now we're gonna see Chen going for the Refresher Orb. This is gonna be the double reverse polarity. They don't have the Blink Dagger yet on Earthshaker, but they're actually getting close. Anime is not far off of that, so it's gonna be Blink on Earthshaker, re double reverse polarity. Probably in the next 15 minutes they'll have that. Maybe even in the next 5 to 10. And once that comes up, do you even need a carry? I mean, really, do you even need a carry? There's no mech. There's no pipe. It's a huge smoke gank from Maneski. They know that that death push is coming soon. They want to go on to hug. He will be thrown back. He's got the Lothar's Edge, but it won't help him now. Big pickoff. Mega kill for Woots. And Woots is really the huge damage dealer for this squad. 
Now they look to push mid. The problem though, they're pushing into a fissure. They're pushing into a blink reverse polarity. They gotta be very, very careful about how they engage here. All the ults are off cooldown. Well, actually no, reverse polarity. 20 seconds to go. It's not ready yet, but it will be soon. In the meantime, they're gonna try and stall. Fissure was stolen. This is a big spell for Jay to steal. How much can Bimbo do at this point? Nice job with the Necronomicon menu, just drawing the creep way back so they can work on the tower faster. Keeping the aggro off of their own creeps at the tower. Tower is dropping quickly. It's a race against time. That reverse polarity is off cooldown. He blinks and he catches everyone. Well, a lot of heroes anyway. That skewers the back end of the tower. Chad, not enough heal. Needed a back there as well. But the Dream Coil is good. And now the chain stun perhaps better onto Biobus. Biobus dropping low. Oh no, Alchemist has stunned himself. Look how squishy he is. Look how fast he's dying. But once the Drow Ranger dies, Fissures crisscross in the night. And Alchemist will survive. Dragon Knight took a huge dip in his own damage once that happened. Was there a buyback? No buybacks yet, but Jay Bimbo lucky to be in trouble. Down he will fall. Even when there's not that true shot aura, there is always going to be this in power. The perfect micro. There's the stop. No, scary forward. Oh boy, this might be the death of Alchemist. If it is, it could be a disaster. Dragon Knight runs forward, then runs back. A little bit of indecision there. Oh, and when it's all said and done, well, Pacific Esports for me, uh, or Emacs for me, came out a bit ahead there. Sure, they lost the tower. A player's I still think trading attacked. with them is fine. I, I don't think that's enough for Mineski. Mineski, because of the kind of lineup they picked, they, and especially building items like Necronomicon 3, they didn't even get an item that will really help them in a 5v5 clash. This is a pushing item. The Necro, the Necro 2. Well, soon to be a Necro 3, most likely. This is a pushing item. Mono Burn is maybe nice against a hero like Magnetar. Can potentially prevent him from getting off the double reverse polarity, but even one. You're guaranteed to get the one. You're not burning all that mana with Arcane Boots. They're also they're also looking at pushing into a Blink Dagger from Earthshaker. So because Pacific East Emacs has so much team fight, so much AoE, and so much lockdown, and even stuff that goes through BKBs, should Alchemist be so inclined as to try and build one? Doesn't matter. Plus, oh, by the way, they have a Drow Ranger who is now going to farm a massive stack of Ancients with ease because she's Drow Ranger, because she has plus 144 damage, and she's not even level 11 yet. This is with that Empower. It is a level 2 or 3 Empower, I think. What level is it, actually? Level 3. Not even a max Empower, not even a level 16 Drow Ranger. Once those two are combined, I want to say she'll be hitting for plus 300 with just these items, and that's not counting the Shadow Blade plus... Or the Lothar's Edge plus damage is not counting crits. It's not counting Manta style. It's not counting any other items that she might build or acquire. And it's not counting the Dragon Knight, who's also got a Lothar's Edge of his own. So I would say don't don't feel that Mineski can afford to trade because they can't. They got to do more than trade. They got to get a Roshan. They got to completely knock out all the other towers. The tier one bottom is still standing. That's helping to protect the Ancients along with uh, the well-placed Centaur, even the Skeletons from Woots looking to scout this out. It's now going to be a bit of neutral creep warfare. Uh, and even the tier 2 top. So Mineski need more towers. They need more map control. That's what they're going for now. RR is, has, does have the gem up. He's got some observer wards. Just looking to try and control the area near the Roshan pit. The blink dagger is up on Puck. The four staff on Rubik. So they're getting these nice utility items up. Again though, I have to ask. Where is the big damage going to come from? How are you going to kill a Drought Ranger with lifesteal? You can't count on these creeps living forever because a blink echo slam is basically going to kill the Chen creeps. Not to mention their shockwave, there's all the AoE. You can't count on Woods to carry this team forever. At some point, it's got to be the alchemist who takes the torch. But all he's got is a relic. He's going to have a radiance, but it's a late radiance. It's a 21 minute radiance on a hero who should get it faster than most heroes because of Goblin's Greed. I feel that clock is ticking, and it seems to be speeding up. Finally, they will commence the push. Now they do have a Necronomicon 3, an army of skeletons chopping away at that tower. It will drop quickly. Four staffing forward is Jay. Pull in, pulling in the Magnus. I'm not sure that's the hero he wants to pull in. Well, that gives him a free blink if you're not careful. And look at the split push. Oh, the team fight is breaking out bottom as soon as I check. It's a big AoE combo. It looks like reverse polarity was used. Now skewering one back, but that's maybe not what he wants. Oh, Chen's still alive. They do lose Y. And now the Dragon Knight falls into the middle of this fight. Will get picked off. Looks like he tried to TP to the tier one. Not where Hug should be. And a long range stun from Alchemist just picking it off. They are kind of self-destructing in this team fight. They had an Echo Slam as well. And it looks like it just wasn't quite enough. Did they use all the ults? Yep, they used everything. Now they're just chipping away at the back lines. 
Rubik with the ice path looking to pick someone off. That was about as bad of a fight from Emacs as you could expect. Getting picked off one at a time, fighting with the DK TP in too late, TP into the tier one, getting caught in the middle of the enemy team. Everything that Emacs could have done wrong there, they pretty much did. And what do they lose for it? Well, they lose two towers, so that's pretty significant. If they lose enough fights like that, then this will be a game that maybe Mineski can look to take it late. But I just don't see that happening. This is going to be an easy kill on Jay. See, that's what happens when they are when they are playing properly, when they are grouping up. It's three auto attacks to kill the Rubik. And he's been getting farm. That's Bimbo on here that's been getting some items, that's been getting farm priority. You look at some of the other heroes. Well, they're a little bit squishy. You've got, you've got a vengeful spirit with an urn running around with really no inventory. Just two or three shot him. And now they can go into Roche. This is just the dire advantage helping out short, but it's also just the power of having the vet, the combo that they have. The Drow Ranger with the Helm of the Dominator with, of course, Empower. She does lose quite a chunk of damage when it's off, but now Dragon Knight's here, and he can tank it. He's going for a BKB. Once the BKBs are up, what can Mineski do? They have swap. They can move them around, but that's it. They can maybe swap an ally to safety. They can't lock these heroes down. They don't have a roar. They don't have a reverse polarity. They don't have any way to deal with these carries. And if there was a gold graph, I'm pretty sure it would be favoring Pacific Emacs right now. It is... Well, this could be a big pick off. Vengeful Spirit in prime position. Remember, there is an Aegis on Biobus, and if they're close enough, they may be able to counter-initiate. they got to know that he's out there a little bit exposed. This Invis rune won't last forever. Forces are under oh attack. boy, RR still hunting. The team is here. Now the Magic Missile to initiate, but the backup is not far away. And then <laughs> comes in Blake's Enigma, trying to catch out that Vengeful Spirit. There's the Macro Pyre as well. Everything very sloppily organized, but they're not focusing down by a bus. And now he starts to auto-attack away. Look how low J drops. Bimbo forced to run away. In comes the Fissure. They haven't dropped the full combo yet. They haven't. Look, even the, even the Magnus is scaring away the farming alchemist. This is your solo Magnus. This is a hero that was supposed to really have some trouble in the laning stage. and Well, or maybe at least. You're hoping he would. He's not. Nice dodge there by Bybus. Dro dodge the killing orb. And while we see Mineski five man, we see Pacific Emacs split push. If you five man, you're not getting kills. You're not getting towers. You are slowly but surely losing your advantage. A good time for a save. Score now 17 to 15. It is looking incredibly good right now for Pacific Emacs. They have such a strong turtle lineup. They have so much team fight. But I have seen teams who have better positions in games lose them before. And Mineski does have some big playmakers. We have seen Bimbo create a few pickoffs. So you can't count Mineski out yet. But it is just a game where they're on the back foot. They're going to have to play this one perfectly. And Emacs are going to have to make a couple of mistakes to really secure a win here. But mistakes do happen. It's been a long day for the players. It's been... Uh, a lot of games, and players get tired, they get hungry, they get cranky, they get frustrated, they're human after all. And that's where the mental state can start to factor in a bit. We'll see if it does. Another wave of skeletons marching forward. Not gonna last long at this point in the game, but they do hit pretty hard. Forces are under attack. Just doing some dewarding. This gem has really paid for itself. Something possibly on the way. Yep, nope, nope, just the Dragonite. So Biobus has the Helm of the Dominator, has the Lothar's Edge. Now he needs to get a BKB. Once he gets a BKB, they have these troll nets, but he can still auto attack. So I'm not sure how much those actually do. A player's forces are under attack. Here we go, middle lane. <laughs> the army of skeletons. Oh, they're just going to work. I love how even the volume gets slowed in Dota 1. It's so cool. Uh, but one flame breath. That'll spell the end of it. <laughs> That'll spell the end of their secret weapon. Weapon X. It's not extinct from orange. It's actually those skeletons. It's not die. It's those skeletons. Swapping in. They are going to find out by a bus. He will try to use the Lothar's Edge. It's not going to help him. This is a nice pick. They do get rid of the Aegis of the Immortal. They have to just run away now. They cannot stay and try to fight him again. Oh, Chen's waiting. He's waiting. He's going to reverse Polarity Chen and his army. But where's the backup, actually? Where is the Echo Slam? It looks like Urshiger maybe didn't get the best one. Is it going to matter, though? It doesn't look like a Vengeful Spirit will fall. And now two heroes dead. Now, well, Alchemist giving some chase, but he can just be kited. He doesn't have a BKB. He's got a Plate Mail. But look at how fast he drops. Even with that Plate Mail, this is the power of the burst damage that someone 
like that vet drought ranger plus dk combo can provide oh and now alchemist is about to stun himself this may cause trouble he's now out of old form there's the stun now the long range cleaves coming in this will be a big pickup for hug and he looks to be able to get it one more auto attack they get two the backstab from chin four heroes dead and they knew it was desperate maneski knew they had to force it somehow miraculously bimbo makes it out of that fight but this is not good, guys. This is Maneski. They were already on the ropes coming into this game. For anyone just tuning in, this is game two of a best out of three. This is your GEST IDC November Grand Finals. And this is a team in Emacs who has won, claimed three championships in the GEST. Out of, I, I think, three out of the past four, or maybe three out of the past five. It's a lot. And they are on the brink of claiming a fourth. They are so far ahead. They've got the better late game. They've got the better team fight. They've weathered the storm. They're not even that far behind on towers, only behind by two. They've got the dire advantage. They've got the Roshan at their disposal. Now they get the level 16 dragon form. Maneski looked like a resurgence for them in this tournament. They crushed through Izone. They crushed through MSI Evo GT even harder. And well, they got to this grand finals, but they just have not looked prepared for Emax. Emax has just looked so prepared for them, especially in game one. They banned out Woots as heroes, especially his high impact AoE supports. The Earthshaker, the Sand King. This game, they did give away, the, and even the Chen in game one. In game two, they gave away the Chen to Woods. But I feel they were perfectly happy to give that away. And we're also seeing, well, Magnetar just not being really valued, I think, nearly as highly as he should be. This is the same Magnus that we see in Dota 1. Here comes the Shadow Blade DK. He's also smoked up, although the smoke not dispelled, but he's going to lead the charge for the squad. Sentry Ward drop. This is going to be bad. This is going to be a reverse polarity. Wombo combo disaster of a fight. Bimbo tries to escape. Where is the Drow Ranger through all of this? She's only now arriving. Will that cost them or will it not matter anyway? Now she's actually running away. Everybody's retreating. And now they catch up the Magnus. They're skewering away. They're just so hard to chase. This is a little bit dangerous. They got to be careful because Drow Ranger can turn around and start wailing on them. Doing a lot of damage, focusing the Alchemist down. Alchemist dropping low. The Centaur come in. All the creeps will fall as well. As well as that Chen, as well as Woots. Woots just playing so well today, but we're seeing the limitations of Chen. And now the reverse polarity comes in. This was the refresher. This is your second reverse polarity from Chen. This is that Magnus refresher. It is, it's just, it's like, it's like an impossible to mess up team fight. Now Alchemist is about to stun himself. This is going to be trouble for him. Big, big trouble, I feel. In comes the Dragon Knight, looking for a stun, looking for another kill, looking to shut down that hard carry. The triple semi carry, the triple really superstar players of this team just doing such a great job hug by a bus and chin playing exceptionally well here in the grand finals on the big stage they are poised to take this game the next roshan comes soon the bkb should all be online Earthshakers, he's got level 11 he's got his scarier echo slam i don't know what more they need at this point honestly emax this is looking to be an almost unlosable position Unlosable. I don't think that's a word. <laughs> uh, it is. It is certainly a way to describe the situation, though. We check Maneski. They've they bought back a few times. What has their item progression been? Obviously, some good items up on. Oh, he's got the boots of travel. He's got the the plate mail. Jay looks to be going for his standard mass utility build. What we used to see out of the bimbo tinies back in the day, with this extra, uh, with this extra staff of wizardry, probably going to be a Yule scepter. Uh, to help keep him alive if they initiate upon him. Chen going back for a mechanism, but it's a late mech. It's a 30-minute mech. Uh, on As far as the rest of their team, Venge has nothing. She does have level 10. But over on the side of Emacs, they're getting all the items they need. Now it's all luxury items. They've already got the Blink Refresher and even a Drums Arcane, but it's 9, 3, and 8 on Chen. Just such an insanely strong start for him. And, I mean, even the Drow Ranger. She's not had the best game. She has died quite a few times. This is the Drow Ranger one 2 and 4. And still look at her. About to get a Chrysalis. Already has the BKB Lothar's Edge Lifesteal. From this point out, you just get mass damage. And there's nothing they can do. Because they don't have an answer for your BKB. A Troll Warlord Net. That's it. But the Troll Warlord Nets only hold you in place. They don't stop you from attacking. They don't limit how much damage you can do. An Alchemist. A hero that needs to be far ahead. He's built to outfarm you. He's not built to outcarry you with equal gold. And right now, he just doesn't have it. I think the gem was lost in that last fight. That was another thing that R lost. That was the map control. And he goes. He wants this. Oh, this is looking bad. In comes the in comes the double BKB bros. Now the BKB pop by Hug. He still wants to dive this. The Fissure blocking off the tr retreat of the Puck. But he will be able to get out of there safely. And those Chen creeps, the other issue with them. 
Uh, they don't live very long anymore. Sure, they go through BKB. They go through Magic Community. But you gotta be alive to go through Magic Community. <laughs> they don't live nearly long enough to... And they're already gone before the fight even starts. Chen is a hero. We can see he only gets weaker as the game goes on. He has his peak really around that 10 to 50 minute mark. And he's still a high impact here in some cases, but not forever. And they know what Bimbo is up to. Bimbo's like, <laughs> see ya, I'm out of here, over here. He's making those storm noises in, in Dota 2 right now. <laughs> oh boy, he shadow, he Lothar's edge is up. He's wind walking in, he wants to initiate. He's thinking about it. He is gonna come around the trees right as the ult ends. And then he's actually just gonna run away. Meanwhile, Drow Ranger sieging down the tower. Look at her plus damage. Well, I was almost right on the mark. Plus 330. I think I said plus 300 or more with just a handful of items. And that's exactly where she is. That's your level three. And and now and they can win this in so many ways. They can win by team fighting. They can win by split pushing. In 1v1s, they're going to win that as well. Because DK and Drow Ranger, nobody can 1v1 these heroes. So it's like, how do you beat this team? You don't have the better team fight. You don't have the better 1v1 matchups. Like, there's just nothing you can do except hope that they get caught out of position horribly and somehow feed. It's just such a bad situation. Now, here, reverse polarity. Chen strikes again. Chen is just always there with the Magnus. What a play. He is playing sensationally, and he is carrying Emacs on his back. Well, not on his back, but they all have, they're all carrying each other on their backs. This is a team effort. Holding hands, head in head. They are going to go for the high ground. Now, Alchemist, he bought back. Is there another reverse polarity up? I think he used it. I think he's got it available. He's looking to go in. Do they even need a reverse polarity? They don't. Just a skewer executed. And now they can just back off. Dream Coil on everyone. And what do you do when you after you Dream Coil? Then, well, you die, probably. He does taser one down. He does taser Don. But still, all the three core heroes are alive. Just got that support twin-headed dragon. And he's still got to deal with Magnus. He's still got to deal with this wrecking crew. This demolition ball that has become Pacific Emax. Bineski. Oh boy, you gotta feel for them. They have had such a great run at the GST. Played so exceptionally well in their first three matches and knocking off so many impressive teams. iZone, MSI EVO GT, even that first esports team that nobody knew them, sure. They're not a well-known household name, but they played really well leading up to that match. They played well in the group stages. They played well in the match versus Mineski. And it still just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. Oh, it's got to hurt. Uh, they haven't lost yet, but it feels like Olots may be coming up soon. It feels like just impossible to deal with this team anymore. And I got to say, I think this Drow Ranger and the Magnetar, they deserve more respect. I will point to the drafts and say, I just think that Mineski did not anticipate what Pacific Emacs wanted to do. Maybe they just hadn't seen them pick these heroes before. Uh, from what I understand, they've been playing Dota 2 a bit more, preparing for leagues like G League, although... Well, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure people know this, but apparently they, Bimbo has announced that they actually were awarded a forfeit loss for their G League match versus LGD. But they have been participating in more Dota 2 tournaments, things like the Philippines Dota 2 All Stars Invitational. Uh, obviously, I think they were in GST Dota 2 as well. At least in the qualifying stage. Uh, I don't know if they did qualify. Uh, I can't remember. I want to say they did not, but. Uh, they've been playing a little more Dota 2, and maybe it's showing. Maybe they're just not quite prepared, but most of these heroes are in Dota 2. The Drow Ranger, that's the one that's not. But you also got to think, well, you just got destroyed by it. You got hammered by it. Just don't deal with it. I mean, especially, it's not just the Drow Ranger. Again, it's that combo. The Dragonite is just such a good complement to her, because he's got the ranged form when he's in ult form, so he gets the damage, but he's also tanky. He's an initiator. He can solo mid, so he doesn't require a safe lane like other carries. It's just... It's a very unique kind of combo that I feel if you get rid of one of them, it makes the matchup a lot more manageable for Mineski. Oh well, they are where they are now, and now it comes down for the final fight. They're down one lane of Rex. Soon it may be a second to fall. Just sitting back, biding their time, even a four staff up on NMA. Obviously, you guys saw it earlier. It's the Bariza. It's Biobus just looking to crit everybody to death. And those crits are going to be massive. Look at that. Plus 400 damage. Plus 400 streak of damage. He doesn't have a Divine Rapier. No, your eyes don't deceive you. This is true, Shadar. This is in power. This is just the most rigged combo I've ever seen. Oh, they don't even need stuns anymore. He can just walk in with BKB. And the enemy team, maybe they run away. But otherwise, he's killing them all. And the... <laughs> That was a bold courier. Even the courier's not safe. In fact, even Oa might not be safe. Like, oh, wait a second. You were there. I think they could just kill him and go win the game. I believe his buyback is on cooldown. Well, they're going to play it safe. 
Oh, look at that. If that was a crit, that'd probably bring him down to about a tenth of his HP, but he will live barely with the four step. 1300 damage crits. Calmly, Viabus pushes in, looking to win this game, looking to seize championship number four for Pacific Emacs. Hell, this would make them undisputably the best team in GST. Uh, as far as this year goes, even if they, even if there is a GST December and they just get crushed, it wouldn't matter. With four championships, they are. There's nobody who can even stack up against them, and they are poised to claim it right now. They've got all the items in the world. Pacific Emacs just this death ball, this massive, self-reinforcing beast of a team. Maybe the assault curse and hug. I suppose you can wait for that. Do you really need it? Top lane is constantly pushing in. In fact, they're losing their building slowly but surely. Something... I think it might have been the creep here that Woots was crying about dying. Oh, in comes the Angry Dragonite. He's going to start the fight off. And now, Biobus with the follow-up damage instantly. Plink, plink, plink. Down goes RR. Will they chase forward for more? Will they just try and get the Rex? It is about to be Emax bringing down a second lane of Rex. I don't think there's anything. There is nothing aside from a mass five-man disconnect. Oh, there's the reverse polarity. Look at the crits. Look at the damage. He needs another power. He's not critting for 1,300. We got to see some more four-digit crits. Alchemist just showing his weakness as a carry, just instantly incinerating. And that will be the GG. This is going to be Pacific Emacs, a clean 2-0 sweep. Maneski, they have played so well this tournament, but they were no match for Emacs today. By a bus and friends. Just stop their way through this series. They absolutely butcher Maneski. As much as I love Maneski, I gotta be honest, they just got absolutely outplayed. Outdrafted and outplayed today. They are a great team, but they are not as good as Emacs on this day. Now Biobus begins to farm that fountain. Needs a little bit extra gold before it's all said and done. You see the teams both have some good manners. They are, they are friends to the end. <laughs> uh, and now the Rex, the throne will fall. But before that, it's time for some good old-fashioned... It's time for some good old-fashioned fountain camping. Or maybe not. Come on, by a bus. You've got an Aegis. Use it. There's the ice path. There's the auto attacks. One, two, three. Down they go. Now a skewer into the fountain. And one shot to bring him down. Much love between these two teams. And much love from me towards the Philippine Dota scene. Congratulations to Pacific Emacs. They are officially, call it now, book it. They are a four-time GEST IDC champion. By a bus, NMA, Hug, Chin, and Don have done it again. They have just crushed their way through the competition. This time they take down the veteran, the vanguard, in Maneski. Maneski, who looked to be having a bit of a resurgence in this tournament, beat a lot of strong teams along the way. Unfortunately, didn't have it today. Not when it counted. Not versus Emacs in the grand finals. It is going to be Maneski who lose this series 2-2 uh, at Pacific Emacs, who take their fourth GST championship. They advance in a clean 2 of sweep. They will be collecting that additional prize money, and more important, importantly, some trophies for their walls. Can anybody stop these guys in Dota 1 anymore? Outside of the field. I mean, honestly, who who's it going to be? I'm not sure. They just, they, they're impressive. Let's be honest about it. But that will wrap it up for today's broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go, before I let you go, please, if you're not already doing so, be sure to follow me on Facebook. Facebook.com slash LDDota. If I ever have more Facebook likes than God's, I will dance Opa Gangnam style on camera for your viewing pleasure. It will be recorded. It will be posted on YouTube. So you guys better start throwing me those likes because it is going to take quite a few to catch up to him. GG Net Gods has an unfair advantage. He's got the advantage of time. He's been doing it for longer, but I believe together we can catch up to him. So please like my Facebook page, twitter.com slash LDDota. Like that or follow me as well if you use Twitter. Last but not least, if you miss any of today's games, youtube.com slash LDDota. They will all be available there. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. I hope to see you all in the future, but for now, that will wrap it up. GST IDC November has come to a thrilling conclusion. Pacific Emacs are your champions. Maneski are the second place runner-ups. And one more shout out as well to our third and fourth place teams, SVRES and First Esports. Third place for SVRES, fourth place for First Esports. The up and coming Cambodians, as well as this very unknown Thai team in First Esports. In their first GST, they secure fourth. Very impressive performance from all four of those teams. Big congratulations to them. And thanks to all you guys for tuning in. It's a wrap, guys. From now, it's just going to be ads for a little bit. I'll hide out in the chat if you want to talk, but that wraps it up for today's broadcast. For now, it's LD signing off.